Hey all, welcome to the home of hard science, as always. And every now and then I do a compilation of facts that illustrate a current issue of great importance to ourselves, the world, our children. And one of those is CO2 and climate and the current theories that are going around and laws being enacted, uh, which have quite horrific uh, implications. So I have been looking into this area for the last few months and being a chemical engineer, I don't find it too difficult in fairness not being arrogant, but I also leverage experts in the field like Professor John Christie of Alabama and many, many others. And I've leveraged all the work they've done over 40 years in this to not have to do it all myself from the ground up. Uh, so I think I know where I am now pretty much. And here I'm going to go through a whole bunch of facts, a top 10, if you will, from the CO2coalition.org. I'll put the website on the screen. And they have put together a fantastic series of actual climate and CO2 facts, right? Indisputable, and no one has countered them. And when you put them all together, and I'll explain a little context, I think you'll be able to form your own opinions and have much better conversations with others about this important topic. Uh, so please do subscribe and share this. And I'll put a link down below to all of the graphs, which you will now understand after I've gone through them. You'll have them fully internalized. So here we go. So here's the website, co2coalition.org, and you can go to the about and see all the great professors and professionals involved. And forward slash facts is what I'm going to go through today. It's an incredible resource. So the first fact one, we have a 140 million year trend of decreasing CO2. Dangerously, you could argue, because if we got down to 200 ppm, then you'd have elimination of vegetative life on the planet. So this means no animals, no vegetation in extremes if you go well below 200. So we were heading to a dangerous place and luckily we got down to around 200 and something and we bumped back up to around 400 uh, based on fossil fuel being burnt. So we've slightly redressed the balance. That's one way of looking at it. Fact two, the warming effect of each molecule of CO2 declines as its concentration increases. This is really important. Any engineer seeing this, and hopefully many lay people, will understand its massive import. So the first 100 ppm of CO2 in the atmosphere does have X warming effect, right? But when you add another 100 ppm of CO2, you get much less extra warming effect than you did for the first 100 and when you get up to 300 or 400 of where we are now, adding hundreds really adds very little warming effect. So happy physics, happy days for all of us. Anyone can see that going up a few more hundred adds bugger all extra warming effect. And it's already a tiny percentage of the warming effect on the planet in the first case. And remember, CO2 is at 400 ppm, which is four hundredths of 1% of the atmosphere. And as you add more, it has a diminishing, vanishing effect on any warming. This is it. Very important fact two. Fact three. First and foremost, CO2 is plant food. And all the whiners say, oh, you're overemphasizing that. But it should be emphasized. If you increase CO2 from 150 ppm in the greenhouse up to 300 and up to 450, which is where we are now in the world with a greening world, uh, you get much more plant growth. So it's a huge benefit for plants, and we depend on plants because plants feed the animals that we eat, and we eat the plants. So this is all beneficial. Very important fact three. Fact four, in the last four glacial advances, the CO2 level was dangerously low. And that's absolutely true. So you can see over the last 400,000 years, we've got a cycle that's repeatable of glacial events. And it's based on a cycle that we'll explain in a lower fact down the list. Uh, but you can see this dramatic sawtooth pattern. And at the end of each glacial cycle, you head towards a very dangerous low in CO2 for plant life. But luckily, nature and physics steps in and it goes back up to a healthier level. So yes, we've added more than normal. So this graph is true. We've added quite a bit, nearly 200 ppm in the last 50 years or so. But the big question is not this. It's what relevance has that got? 
So this is a very important fact for, and fact five, CO2 emissions began accelerating in mid 20th century. And that's just shown here on the graph. But the question is, what's the relevance of that? Things change all the time, but what's the relevance? So we get into that. Fact six, our current geologic period, quaternary, has the lowest average CO2 levels in the history of the earth. And here it is, we're down on the floor. So in the tertiary, Cretaceous, and even in the Jurassic, where you had all the dinosaurs and super mammals going across the planet full of forests and booming life, you know, that was up at 2000 ppm. And next century, we're not going to get anywhere within a mile of that. Uh, but the whole planet was booming. And way back in the Cambrian explosion, where all the kind of animal and all the life exploded on the earth, it was up at around 6,000. And that's when life exploded. So come on, don't be taking the mickey here. Don't be trying to come out with nonsense and tell us that this is catastrophic down here. Uh, it's absurd. So I really love fact six. Fact seven, current CO2 levels are near record lows. We are CO2 impoverished. And there's a bit of kind of redundancy here, but here shows again, 600 million years. You can see the Cambrian here in different data. It was actually up near 8,000. That's when life exploded out of the earth. And you've got the Jurassic as well. And it was up at two, 3,000 when the planet was just bursting with foliage and uh, big dinosaurs and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and here we are down here on the very floor of CO2. So anyone even suggesting CO2 going up and down in this tiny band is going to make a difference. Uh, they've got a lot of explaining to do and they should start by explaining their modeling because it's modeling that's used, right? That might sound familiar to people who went through COVID. Modeling was used. It's always used. Fact eight, more CO2 means more plant growth. And again, this is a repeat, but it's just some figures here showing the various plants, beans, tubers, etc., uh, that get massive increase in growth. And this is commercial data, and you get a huge payback by increasing uh, just a few hundred ppm of CO2. So this is great for everyone, right? Especially with those who have a plant-based diet, uh, but animal eaters too. Fact nine, more CO2 helps to feed more people worldwide. And this kind of follows on from the last one. And grain production is breaking records. NASA have published that the earth is greening uh, hugely because the CO2 is rising a little uh, with what we're putting in there. So this is all a good news story in fact nine. Where's the bad news? I'm not sure. I think we have to go and check the models of the UN, right? And the IPCC who are all funded from certain individuals. And we won't get into that. Fact 10, modern warming began more than 300 years ago. This is an important fact. So you can see here back in the 16, 1700s, they had thermometers and it's been going along and rising, right? Particularly, you could say since the 1800s. But this trend, broadly speaking, any engineer who claimed that the CO2 going up was causing this would be laughed out of class. Uh, but unfortunately, we don't have enough critics out there these days. Fact 11, melting glaciers confirm modern warming predated increases to CO2. And we know we're coming out of the last ice age. So the glacier shortening begins around 1800s and then it continues. And this has happened again and again over the past tens and hundreds of thousands of years. We showed that graph earlier. So here you are, well before the CO2. Here's where the CO2 is increasing and the vector has not changed. Fact 12, rising sea levels confirm modern warming predated increases CO2. And here we can see back in the 1800s with natural cycles and there's geological movement of the plates as well. There's myriad factors, but they ain't CO2. So here it is rising from way back here. They're natural cycles. Fact 13, temperatures changed dramatically during the past 10,000 years even. Never mind 200,000 or 400. Right? Here's the temperature plot. For the last 10,000 alone. And it's all over the shop because there's myriad different natural phenomena occurring, and CO2 is the least of them. So this is only up to 200, 
2007, by the way, and it, as we showed earlier, continues up. As Professor John Christie in a recent interview, I'll link below, fantastic. He spent 40 to 50 years mapping data and he's published papers and developed a NASA satellite atmospheric temperature system. And he said the last 50 years we've gone up 0.5. And also we've gone up 1.3 since the late 1800s. And all we've got from that is more prosperity, hugely increased life expectancy, a 90 plus reduction in climate events. And we've pulled out billions of people out of poverty. And our GDP has gone up massively. So all the good stuff has happened with 1.3 degrees. And what we're saying, another 0.5 or 1 degree in the coming 60, 70 years is suddenly going to blow everything up. Come on, pull the other one. Fact 14, interglacials usually last 10,000 to 15,000 years. Ours is 11,000 years old. So we're at the tail end of an interglacial and we can see here we're coming out of it. And we came out of it way back 150,000 years ago and we shot up out of it in temperature 250,000 years ago and 350,000 years ago. So this pattern is clear as crystal and we'll go through the Milankovic cycles which kind of largely drive this. But to say that our temperature here is to do with us, you'd better show us the model, the black box model that buried within it is the magic. You show us your magic, sons. So fact 15, the last interglacial was eight degrees warmer than today. Polar bears survived, Greenland didn't melt, and in Jurassic, even more so. And again, they just took the data here. Here's the modern warming, right? Starting around 10,000 years ago, primarily. We've showed these graphs at many different scales. And here's the emium warming back here. And it was higher temperature, actually. And uh, nothing bad happened. Fact 16, the current warming trend is neither unusual nor unprecedented. Absolutely. And we've kind of showed this already. So here's various kind of points in time. And we can see here that we're heading up now. But again, we're following the chaotic cycle of nature. And this is a 10,000 year graph, of course. And that was from the Greenland ice core data, by the way. Some of these are from ice core data. Some of them going back to 1600 I showed you earlier are actually using thermometers. Fact 17, and don't worry, we're nearly finished. The current warming trend is neither unusual nor unprecedented, part two. And here we have a thousand up to 2000 AD. And basically you can see little ice age here goes up again. You know, this is moving along its own natural cycles. And, and that's it. And it was warmer back here in the medieval warm period. And this is from, I don't see the ref there. This is from ice cores as well. Also, I would guess. Fact 18, Earth's orbit and tilt drive glacial interglacial changes. And these are the Milankovitch cycles. And these are crucial. So the Earth's orbit, the eccentricity, the precession and the tilt of the Earth all interact together to influence how much energy comes from the sun to Earth. And it's the sun that provides all the heat, guys, right? So as we change orbits and tilts moving through the solar system and around the sun, we get these huge changes. And the CO2 is just trivial in the face of these massive cyclic shifts. Fact 19, we are living one of the coldest periods in all of Earth's history. Believe it or not, that's a fact, you know. And again, I showed you the Jurassic earlier and Cretaceous and tertiary. You know, we're down in the cold space. And even if we go up a bit more, as is naturally occurring now, the question is, the proof, the onus of proof is that that will be a problem. But all we've got are, begins with M, models. Yes, models. Fact 20, for most of Earth's history, it was around 10 to degrees Celsius warmer than it was today. And again, similar graph, it's just making that point. You know, that's just the way it is. In fact, it shot up the temperature and then we had the Cambrian and life exploded. So here we are down here. Come on, come on. Fact 21, IPCC models have overstated warming up to three times too much. And yes, uh, Professor John Christie, this may be his data. He shows multiple balloon, satellite and other reanalyses and here's what actually happened but since the 90s and the ipcc which comes from un which kind of comes from rockefeller i've told that story elsewhere and the league of nations and club of rome and all these groups since the funding of the scientists towards catastrophe came in the models 
all show catastrophe. But we know the real world data says that the models are nonsense. And the real world data shows this steadily warming trend. And we'll see it continue up. But again, no reason to expect a major problem. In fact, probably benefits, as I've pointed out. Fact 22, for human advancement, warmer is better than colder. And there's no question about this. So we have 90 something percent reduction in catastrophic weather impacts since the 1930s. This is published. And one reason is technology. We are in a nice warmer place now and we're happier and we have technology to not have floods cause major damage, etc. But on the fires, uh, the vast majority are set by humans and lack of proper forestation management has caused more of those to begin to come up. But they're human driven, not CO2. They're driven directly by human policies and arson, to be quite honest. So here we are at this temperature. And another thing to point out, I don't think it's in the facts, but I would point out that around 10 times more people die from cold conditions than from too warm. So we're already stacked heavily towards wanting a little more warmth, uh, not less. Fact 23, and we'll stop at 25. CO2 increases enhancing corn production a lot. So this is on the record, 2016 published. So we're getting more food. And that again is, unfortunately for IPCC, a good thing. So they have to kind of dissemble and obfuscate even more in the light of this. Fact 24, an ideal temperature is not that of 150 years ago. And again, we kind of touched this already. So crop failures, pestilence and all is what happened when temperatures were colder. So we're actually better off now and better off even probably if we're a little higher, like 0.5 or 1 degree more. Hmm, I'll take it. Fact 25, more CO2 means moister soil, moister plants and better plant growth. So when plants get a little more CO2, uh, they actually use less moisture. That's why we're seeing deserts undesertifying, if that's a word. NASA has validated this around the world. So again, all these great effects. Until you go to the modeling that shows disaster, you can't find any disaster. You can only find positives. So real life data, it's all positive. And the black box models, it's a disaster. Go figure. Fact 26, ideal temperature is not that of 150 years. Yeah, we've kind of been through that one. And I said I'd stop at 25, but I'll just have a quick look. Yeah, this is interesting. After World War II, CO2, of course, rose massively. Temperatures actually fell, depending on the data set, etc. You're talking fractions of a degree, so you could argue what's the difference. And anything else I want to show you? No. Droughts are not increasing in the U.S., from NOAA, so that's important. And also the 2021 IPCC official report clearly calls out around the page 160 uh, that there is no credible evidence linking man-made climate change to any natural occurrences like floods and droughts, etc. So the IPCC themselves quietly say that, but the head of the UN, Guterres, says now that the planet is boiling, not warming anymore, it's boiling, the seas are boiling. So again, political, geopolitical, nothing to do with science. And there's for droughts from NOAA, they're not increasing. And uh, globally, droughts are actually kind of in decline, as I think I mentioned earlier. So that's it. That's a summary of the data. I'm going to finish and show you again the website and I'll link it below and I'll gather these graphs together in an easy format in PowerPoint for you as co2coalition.org forward slash facts. And do take the climate quiz as well. And if you answer according to the way I've been interpreting this, uh, you'll probably get a high score, I would guess, and rightly based on hard science and empirical real-world data. Well, there we have it, folks. So the facts, as always, tend to speak for themselves, I would suggest. And again, we leverage experts all the way, and the CO2coalition.org, headed up by a Princeton professor, 
in the appropriate fields, physics and molecular interactions, transmission of energy, etc. So it's perfect and huge uh, quantity of other professors, doctors in the field uh, who are also with them in the CO2 Alliance. So I think it's a great resource. The link's down below and also I've gathered together the graphs I've just gone through. As always, thanks so much to my Patreon and PayPal supporters who enabled me to get the facts in front of the people and hopefully help enable discussion around these important things and anyone else who can hop on board and support it keeps my investigative and scientific journalism alive and getting the content out there to help the people so thanks so much